Hi everyone, happy Sunday. Let's do some cooking. Where is my wine? Oh. Here we go. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Don't mind my little setup going on here in the background. I'm doing a time lapse of some seeds that I'm growing. So we have a little makeshift tripod set up over there. All right. Wait for a few people to jump on. Try and get my camera angles better this time so that you can see what I am chopping up down here. There we are. Move it back a little bit. All right, so I've been out to the garden and I have picked a few things. I didn't think I had much in the garden because it's a little bit in between seasons at the moment, but I have managed to find quite a lot of stuff. So um, I am going to use what I have picked from the garden. So I have got, look at this little cute cabbage. Cabbage, I've got some rainbow chard with colorful stems. Hi Libby. Yes, I'm so excited for the unicorn noodles as well. So today we are gonna make unicorn noodles um, using vermicelli noodles and the red cabbage. So I've got my little red cabbage and I also have some of the outer leaves of the red cabbages I've got in my garden. Some have little holes on them, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. We are going to be using these leaves to dye our noodles purple. And then we'll make some wraps as well. So all this stuff we're going to put into some wraps with the noodles. And then I'm going to make two dressings or sauces. So a satay sauce and then like a soy honey chili sauce to go with it um so what else have we got here got some nasturtium leaves i have so much nasturtium at the moment so i've got some little baby ones that i'm going to put inside the wraps and then these bigger ones here these could be used as wraps because they're huge like the size of that so we've got those and then i've got a bunch of the nasturtium flowers here and some snapdragons, dianthus, and a little baby chrysanthemum. Oh, some more snapdragons. There. Yeah. So we'll put them in the wraps as well so it looks nice and colourful. I've also picked these little <laughs> baby radishes. They're so small. But we'll pop them in the wraps for a little bit of crunch. And you can also eat the leaves on the radish, especially when they're little and young like this. The leaves um, don't have as many spikes. When they get older and tougher, they've got lots of spikes on them. But um, you can eat radish leaves. You can put them in a pesto. Um, but when they're really young, you can eat them raw. I've got some little fennel fronds, which you can add. I've got some lettuce to add. And a few other things like herbs and a little bit of baby celery. So to start with, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dye the noodles. So to do that, we need to make some colored water. So I've just got some water in here. And it depends on how many noodles you're cooking, but you wanna try and keep it as little water as possible because you want the noodles to absorb all of this colored water. So I think about, and here I've got about a cup of water, maybe a little bit more. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my red cabbage leaves. And I like to use the outer leaves because you don't really use them. Often they've got holes and stuff in them and they get chucked on the compost. So 
we're not really wasting it at all by just using it for the coloring. Get those out of the way in my knife. So I'm just going to chop these up roughly. Few of these off outer leaves on here because they've got a lot a lot of bright color in there too so it doesn't you can chuck as many of these cabbage leaves in as you want the more you put in the vibe more vibrant and more saturated the color will be um, so you can sort of test it out with a few and then add more if you need to so we'll get that simmering. And then once the, all the color has come out of the cabbage into the water, then we can add in our noodles and the noodles don't take long to cook, like a few minutes, um, like five minutes max. And the noodles will be cooked and they'll absorb all that colorful liquid. And then we can do the color changing so that going. While that's cooking, I am going to pickle a few of these stems because I want to use the leaves um, as a wrap, but not so much the stems. So I thought, what I thought I'd do is just do a quick pickle and we can add that to our wraps. For that, I'm just going to cut off some of these rainbow chard stems and they're so colourful. What you can see a bright pink and bright orange. So let's chop that up. I'm just going to chop them up a little. I love lots, adding lots of color into my food, and I feel like this is going to be. A rainbow. The purple, green, pink, orange, all the colours. All right, so I'm just going to put some vinegar in a little thingy. Um, just some vinegar and some sugar. You could use apple cider vinegar or white vinegar. I'm just going to do white vinegar because I've run out of the apple cider vinegar. And I need to add a bit of sweetness to this because it's, that is just white vinegar. Um, so let's do that. You could, you could add sh uh, sugar or honey. I'm just going to add a bit of sugar. A couple of teaspoons. Be better if this was heat it up so you can do this in a little saucepan so that it dissolves quicker. Just to take a bit of the edge off so it's not so vinegary. And then we're just going to chuck our rainbow chard in there. And let that pickle while we prepare the rest. This is boiling now. So with the cabbage, you just want to try and squish as much of the colour out as you can into the water. And you'll see it start to turn blue first, which it has done now. Oh, I'm going to pour it. You can't see. Um, so at the moment it's blue and then it will start turning purple. And the <laughs> these cabbages are different varieties I've got in my garden and they're actually... Start the, all the purples actually coming out and now they're going green. All that colour's going into the water. Down a little bit. Add a little bit more.
So that'll probably take about only five to 10 minutes, just trying to really get a lot of that color out. Obviously, the longer you do it and the more color you can get out of the cabbage, the more colorful they'll be. And I've tried a few different noodles. I've tried like the pad thai noodles as well. And they aren't, uh, they don't work as well. I don't know if the surface area is too big so it doesn't absorb all the color. Whereas these are tiny little noodles and they absorb the color so well. So I've sort of stuck with those um, after a bit of trial and error. Wow, I haven't had that before. Normally the cabbage like stays purple. These, obviously some of these ones in my garden are just like completely different varieties. And they're going green. Just crush them up, get all of that color out. Yeah, I can see the water starting to turn from blue to purple now. So that's getting a lot more pigmented in there. So you want to try and keep as little amount of water in there because you can add more water, but um, if you put too much water in and you don't have enough of the cabbage, you can't really do with that unless you put in more cabbage. And if you don't have more cabbage, well, you don't want to waste your, this is the good part of the cabbage, you don't want to waste that. So it's always better to have as little water as you can and then you can always add more if your noodles need more water. All right. I don't, I don't know, it's kind of hard to show you until we're taken out, we'll strain that off. I think that's probably ready. We'll strain off that cabbage. Make sure that we keep all the purple liquid. So I'm just gonna do that into a bowl. Squish out as much of the colour as I can. All right, so now we have purple water. So that's just the water that has been, the cabbage leaves have been cooked in. Put that back in the pan and I'm just going to add my noodles. Mm. Oh, I'm going everywhere. All right. So you don't need much heat for these, like, on a low heat. Try and let them absorb all of that water. And while that we do that, I'll just chop up some more veggies for the noodles. So you can add anything to these. You could add capsicum, cucumber, avocado, anything that you have you could add to the um, wraps. I'm just using whatever I've got in the garden. So I've got some red cabbage. Chop that up nice and fine. Then I have got my flowers, my leaves, my nasturtium leaves. Then I've got some mint leaves here and some edible weeds. I've got the chickweed, which is really nice like to use as like sprouts. So we're gonna add some of that. And then we'll just chop up some of these little baby radishes. They will be nice. And these wraps. Oh no, man down. I thought we just put a, a lid on that and turn it off. 
it doesn't need much heat to cook. It's more so that you want them to absorb all the flavour. So I'm just going to actually turn that off now and just let it absorb the flavour. Try and get as much of that purple colour into the noodles as possible. All right. A little radish. All right, so there's two different ways that I can do the, the wraps. I've got the rice paper, which I actually have some colored ones. I've got the white rice paper, and then if I can find. I've actually got like this one's sort of a different color, it's not white, it's a bit darker. I've got a yellow one. So the yellow one is. Turmeric, I've got beetroot, brown rice, black rice paper. Like, I don't know, I just found this round colourful rice paper. It's not actually very vibrant. but So we've got the rice paper we can make rolls with with our noodles or we can do wraps from the garden by using these rainbow chard leaves. So we're going to do one of them as well. So to prepare this... For a wrap you want to get the as big a leave as you can find and then this spine here is quite thick so we're gonna just try and remove a little bit of that by just you want to try and not go all the way through but just skim off a bit of the spine so it's a bit thinner that way it'll be easier to bend oh. So what we're going to do first is we're going to blanch this so that they're nice and soft so we can bend them. So just to blanch that, just chuck it in a bit of water in a pan. Turn that on. Oh, our noodles are looking purple. So hard to show you. Without tipping them everywhere, which wouldn't be good. All right. But our noodles, just get that going. And then we can make some wraps. Sounds very healthy. Yes, it's all looking very healthy. You could obviously add anything you want to these wraps, um, any proteins that you've got or anything like that. And we're going to also make a little bit of a non-healthy sauce. So in here we'll make some peanut satay sauce. So I've just got some peanut butter. Um, we can make that now actually while we're waiting for those. So the peanut satay sauce, this is just a quick one that I chuck together. It's like um, a tablespoon or two of peanut butter. I think that is two teaspoons. Two, yeah. About two heaped teaspoons of peanut butter. And then I'll probably just add in like half a teaspoon of soy sauce or oh, this is tamari for a bit of salty and then I'll add in a bit of hot water I think this is still hot so just a splash of hot water which will help um, loosen up that peanut butter and just start mixing it to chuck it everywhere and then what I would do is I'd also add a bit of coconut cream or coconut milk to give it a little bit of the creamy texture. I'm just going to chuck in. This is just what I've been using for my coffee this week. So I'm going to just add a bit of that, which is uh, almond and coconut. And just mix that around and give it a try. It might need a little bit more sweet or salty or you can add some more soy sauce. But it will start loosening. Ooh. Becoming more of a sauce. And a little bit more hot water. I'm 
making such a mess, chucking this sauté sauce around. It needs a little bit of chili. Might chuck a bit of chili flakes in there. All right, let's check on this. Find some chili flakes. This is peanut satay sauce is so easy just to chuck together. Peanut butter, soy sauce, water, and coconut milk or whatever milk you've got. Some chili flakes. I feel like it needs a little bit. All right, so we've got our sauté sauce here. You can dip in. So the rainbow chard now, so you can see it's a, it's a lot more like bendy. So we'll be able to roll that one up. Make some room here. All right, turn that off. Let's check on our noodles so we've got our purple noodles here which we've dyed with the cabbage leaves they're not looking as vibrant i can definitely let them sit a little bit longer because you can still see a few little white bits where they haven't absorbed there's still room for them to absorb more and if you can see the tiny little white bits so we'll just keep them going for a little bit longer Chicken who's here. Yay! I'm glad you guys made it too. That's all right. We'll catch you back up. So, yes, I do have some colourful um, rice paper wraps. I don't know I, where I found these. Um, but, yeah, the beetroot and turmeric ones are, like, nice colours. The rest are, like, black and white, so we've got those, we'll get them ready actually, got our little pickled rainbow chard stems in here, if you missed that at the start, that was just the vinegar and some sugar and we're just doing a little quick pickle to chuck those in our wraps, right, make some space i'm trying to get this in the shot because i'm normally missing that out all right so i think i've got everything cut i think we can just make a wrap now we'll do this one because we've got this already so this is the rainbow chard that we've um blanched 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 what did you say <laughs> um and I'm going to put a little bit of the satay on there. Oh, I haven't quite got it in, do I? So I'm just going to spread some of that. Put. It's been a while since I made this, so I need to remember. A little bit of radish. What else can we put in there? A little bit of the chickweed. A bit of the pickle. All right, so now we need our noodles. Let us get them. And let's do some color changing unicorn noodles.
All right. So we've got our purple noodles in here. Definitely I've made brighter ones before. I think I'm just trying to, I was trying to do it a little bit too quick. So they're not as purple as I'd normally do it. But then to make them pink, we're going to put a little bit of lemon juice in there. Let's see if I can find a better bowl to show you that because I feel like that's not the best bowl. This one might work there. Yeah, that's better. We'll be able to see it. So this is a really fun one to do. If you're entertaining or you're going over to someone's place and you need to take a, a dish, you can make some of these colour-changing noodles. And then just before it's ready to serve, you can um, squeeze on the lemon juice. Are we ready? I feel like I need to do a pattern or something interesting. <laughs> okay. I'll do like a crop. I'll shoot myself in the eye. Just squeeze on the lemon juice. And you can see it changing. So fun. There we have my unicorn noodles, just made with the outer leaves of the cabbage that you don't really use anyway. They usually get chucked out. They've got holes in them from bugs or anything like that. Then I just love making these because they're really fun. And then you can use the, I put these noodles in salad. You can put them in anything really, but obviously today we're gonna chuck them in some rice paper rolls and in some green wraps. Yeah. Can mix it through. All right, that's enough. <laughs> Let's make some food. Okay, so I'm going to chuck some of these in here. What else have I got to add? I might add a few nasturtiums. I can hear Thomas snoring in the lounge. <laughs> Makes a, cha a change from embarking. All right, now this is probably the hardest bit is like r rolling this up. Let's see. Because I always add too much. I get too excited and I add too much. And this isn't actually a very big leaf. So we'll see if I can do it. There we are. So we've got a little wrap here, which is our rainbow chard. And this isn't a very big leaf. So if you get my leaves at the moment, I've been eating them so much, there's not actually that many big ones left. So they're not that big. Um, so you can make obviously a lot bigger ones. And then if you just put it on the plate, so that's the end there that we rolled up. If you just put it on the plate like that, it will stay. And then you can cut it open. This one's not a very big one. So we cut it open. We've got our little wrap. Pretty easy to eat too. Like it's not falling out the bottom. You could chuck a little bit more of your satay sauce on if you wanted. And and go. Delicious. Set that aside. This is good. I don't have to cook dinner. Put our little guy on there. He can stay there because he's half eaten. And let's make the rice paper roll now. 
and then we'll make a nasturtium taco thingy. Why not? We've got we've got all that stuff in the garden. All right. So to make the rice paper roll, we get our rice paper. Um, we need to get a plate that's not as flat, like it's got a little bit of a edge on it. Um, put a bit of water in it. So we've got a little bit of water in a plate. Should be warm water. And you get your rice paper, submerge it in the water for a few seconds until it goes soft. I don't know if that's warm enough. You'll know when it get, it's ready because it'll start to like go translucent and all floppy. Oh, I can't catch up on the comments. Chickweed is that. Yes, chickweed is just some weed that grows in my garden and it is so, there's so much of it at the moment. It loves this time of the year when it's really um, wet and it can be eaten raw. It's like sprouts, really. So we'll chuck that, I always chuck that in salads and wraps and things like that. All right. So, yeah, I don't think this water was warm enough but we're getting there. It's starting to go floppy. All right. I feel like I need to do this on a tea towel. Yeah, see, now it's like ready to go. Mm. Don't fold it on top of each other. Try and spread it out, can you see? going out the frame again. We need the tea towel because it's too wet. So just get a bit of a damp tea towel. Because if it's super dry, it will stick to the tea towel. Do you guys call them tea towels? I feel like I'm stuck in between all these different ways of saying things and I never know who says what. All right, what are we gonna put on it? So if you wanna put flowers on it, put them face down on the bottom so that you can see them. My hair in there. So I've got some nasturtium flowers here that I'm just gonna pop face down. Then I will put on some chickweed. And a little row. And again, you could chuck anything in these, like avocado, um, cucumber, carrot sticks. Okay, I'm still saying all the healthy things. Um, what else could you chuck in there? Like chicken and, I don't know, everything. All can go in here. Some red cabbage, some radish. I can't forget my pickled um, rainbow chard. Look at all these colours. So much colour. Oh, and this one, I'm going to chuck some of these mint leaves. This is the Vietnamese. Is this Vietnamese mint? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is what it's called. So we'll chuck that face down as well. Snapdragons, and then some of our noodles. Again, I'm putting lots of stuff in here, which I probably shouldn't, but we do that. You should see, oh, if you watch my pizza one, my gosh, I can't stop putting stuff on the pizza. More is more. All right, so now I'll, all I'm going to do is I'm going to Fold over the sides like that. It's always tricky doing these. Roll that over. 
and then roll it up. I mean, I'm no expert at this. Usually the first one's always bad and then your other ones will get better. <laughs> this needs to be a little bit wetter too. Yeah, that one's, that's not the best one, but you know, you got. Do a yellow one. Yeah, that water needs to be a bit warmer. We don't want to waste this water. All right, so if you if you do have lots of nasturtiums in your garden, you can use these as well as little wraps or tacos. So you can blanch these quickly as well, and they'll go like a vibrant green. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to chuck some stuff in there. So these ones are really actually, these ones are so big, I could roll this up. Just take the centre bit out of there. I'm going to put on some satay because I love satay. Then I'm going to put in a bit of red cabbage, a bit of unicorn noodles, a bit of nasturtium flour, some radish, some chickweed. And we've got our radish leaves here. So we don't need to waste the radish leaves either, especially because these are quite young radish. You can, the young ones aren't as um, spiky, so you can chuck them in or just you put them in a pesto. Yeah. Fold that over, fold the end over, fold the end over. Roll it, roll it. Oh, it would be nice if that bit was on the end. So then you've got a little nasturtium spring roll thingy. Perfect size. We need some dipping sauce here. Um, the satay one is a bit fixed, but yeah, put a little nasturtium roll thing. Delicious. Oh yeah, that one's ready to go. The nasturtium adds like some nice peppery hit to it. I think I probably would blanch this so it's a little bit softer to roll and use. That's not good enough. All right, we've got the turmeric spring roll. So the lemon juice is pretty much spread and now they're just pink noodles. The purple's gone. But that's okay. We like pink noodles as well. And I picked some little baby celery. Honestly, like once you start learning what things are edible, you think you've got nothing in your garden and you go out and you just find all the stuff that you can put together a meal out of what felt like. I felt like there was nothing in my garden and it turns out there's plenty. All right, let's have another crack at this. This is definitely a weird color, I feel. It's quite a weird. The turmeric colored. 
It's gone like a coral color. <laughs> yeah. So that's like three different ways that you can make wraps from the garden. We've got the nasturtium and you can use the smaller ones as just like little mini taste testers, little, just like a little taco. So I've got a recipe on my website for um, these using like a green papaya salad, which is really nice as well. You can make up a big green papaya salad and then use these as little tacos. Um, delicious, healthy. Very easy to make, like <laughs> you just chuck some stuff on there and you got a little taco. He's so cute. And then obviously we've got our rainbow chard ones, which you definitely need to blanch. And you can use any sort of greens for those. You can use um, like broccoli leaves, cabbage leaves, um, cauliflower leaves. You just need to remove the, cut down some of that rib there so it's easier to bend and then blanch them and then use them as your wraps like you would if you were having like any sort of like Mexican wraps or um, anything like that, if you don't have any other wraps in the house, it's a good gluten-free option there too for you. And then these, look up, look up, these are so big. Um, I'm really not catching up with these comments, am I? Yes, make them tonight, give them a go. You can, yeah, like I said, you can put anything in these wraps. Um, I do like a nice little mince one as well with um I make I've been making this mince using lentils and it sounds weird but like it's a vegetarian mince with lentils and grated carrot and it's so good. Oh no, I've got a bug in my wine. Why get him out? No. I mean free protein and all, but no thanks. My radishes have bolted free seeds. Yes, and because if you do get some warm weather, you can um, your radishes might bolt. They also will send out little um, seed pods, and you can eat the seed pods on the radish as well. Those are nice. You can pickle those. You can eat them fresh. That's just before the seeds are ready. So they'll be like little green pods. You can eat those, and then if you leave them, they'll go dry and turn into the seeds, which you can obviously use to plant the next year. Oh, watermelon radish is one of my favorites. I did plant some seeds, but I don't have them actually ready to go. Um, those are definitely my favorite as well. <laughs> How your family would react putting chickweed on their plates. You could hide it, put it in the stir fry. I actually have used it all. I don't even have any left here. So easy to it's so easy to just grab and I like chuck it on top or bulk up your little wraps. Um, let's try some of this. So I did a um, batch of pickled rainbow chard stalks the other day. I need to put the recipe up for that. That was they're delicious. Um, but all the color comes out of them. So they start off like bright, colorful, and then all the water, all the color goes out into the liquid and they just don't look <laughs> that appealing afterwards, but they taste good. So that's why I'm just like, I just like quick pickling them now because they keep the color and they taste still crunchy. And then they've got that pickling vinegary taste. Oh, so much going on here with the chickweed. All right, so that's pretty much a quick one today, chucking those together. Obviously, if you want to make them for dinner, you could make them so quickly. Um, if you did miss the unicorn noodles, cooking these at the start, you'll be able to watch back once um, we finish this live. You'll be able to re-watch it to make the purple 
cabbage juice to then make these unicorn noodles. And again, that's really quick. You can do that in like five, ten minutes and you've got noodles that you could serve with anything. I serve these all the time um, with any, with pretty much anything I use these. These, these are my pantry staple. I have always got these um, to add to salads, to add with curries, to add to anything. So, yeah, I hope you all found something useful from that. Let me know if you do make the unicorn noodles or any of these wraps. I'd love to see your versions of them because obviously everyone makes their own versions um, using what you've got in the garden. It's always fun. Every time I make every time I make these recipes, they're different because of what I have growing. Um, I could go out and, you know, when you think about wraps and you think about spring rolls um, or Viet Vietnamese rolls, you think about, you know, you need avocado, cucumber, carrot sticks and all that but you don't you can definitely make use with all sorts of things in your garden um, to come up with just as good as a meal um, yeah I'm definitely going to eat these your son likes chickweeds and hates greens it's interesting I really like it I just I just call them sprouts <laughs> they're nice And at the moment, obviously, there's a lot of weeds in the garden because everything is, like, with all the rain and now that it's getting close to spring here in Perth anyway, everything's taken off, all the weeds have gone crazy. So I um, might as well eat them because that's free food. And I have some seeds there in the background growing. That's what that weird setup is over there. So if you've got any questions, definitely leave me a comment. I will try and get back to you. But, yeah, that's pretty much it from me today with my cooking. That one was a quick one rather than, like, the tart the other day. That was took forever. But I'm trying to pick recipes that are quicker so that we don't run out of time to get them done. And I can just keep making wraps all night for dinner. So many. Oh, so sticky. And little tacos. <laughs> yeah, you can eat dandelions for sure. I don't know. There's like a there's a false dandelion as well though that and I think that, that is more present here in my garden than the actual dandelion. Um, and clover as well. You read clover. Um, there's the other one which we call in New Zealand puha, which over here I think is called, oh, don't quote me on this. I feel like it's called a so, a so, so thistle or something like that. That one's popping up everywhere at the moment um, and you can eat that as well. So, yeah, there's always plenty to eat in the garden. <laughs> Once you learn what is edible and what parts of the plant are edible, you just really open yourself up to have so much food that you might already have in your garden that's just ending up in the compost or it goes to the chickens. Um, and creating and you actually giving these recipes a try will make it just like stick in your head a lot easier and you'll think when you're out in the garden, you're like, I don't have anything for dinner, what can I make? And then you'll remember because you've made it before and you can just make something out of random stuff that you find. And I love that. Just makes it so much easier to be a little bit more self-sufficient when you have um, the knowledge and the experience from trying these things. And obviously try them if you like them, if you don't. They're not for everyone. Like, nasturtiums aren't for everyone. Some people don't like them, but then if you put satay sauce on them, they taste like satay sauce. <laughs> so it's always a bonus. <laughs> Grass in your eggs <laughs> as chives. So thistle was pronounced like cow. Sal, like Sal? Yeah, I think that's the one that we call Puha in New Zealand. Um, and that's used all the time. 
um, and cooking. Grass is bland. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> Grass, chives, same, same. Just very different flavours. At least they would have looked the part. All right, well, thank you guys for joining me. I'm going to wrap that up now. Like my pun there. Um, and clean up my mess <laughs> and have some more of my finish off these unicorn noodles because no one just wants to watch me eat on camera. That's just awkward, especially noodles. <laughs> Um, I hope you all have, a, have an amazing weekend and got some gardening done. Um, I will try and be back again next week, next Sunday, for another live. So I hope you guys can join me then. And if you have any suggestions, definitely let me know because I haven't even thought about next Sunday yet. So I have nothing lined up for what I'm going to do. <laughs> so if you want something you want to see, then definitely let me know. I have got a few seeds and things on the go at the moment. So... I could definitely go through those um, because spring is coming and it's all about planting seeds, seeds, seeds and more seeds to get that garden cranking again. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? I don't even know what's going on in half of this. I'm trying to catch up. What am I planting this spring? Um, so I've just planted, a, I think I've planted like three or four types of tomato. I've planted two types of cucumber. I've got the white cucumber and the market mole cucumber. I'm just looking out there because that's where my seeds are. I'm trying to remember. Um, what else did I plant? So tomatoes, cucumbers, watermelon, honeydew melon, rock melon. I feel like I've planted more than that. Zucchini. I planted the gold zucchini and the Lebanese zucchini and pumpkin. And I've just planted a few of each so I can get, you know, a few rounds going of that. And then, you know, in a week or two, I'm going to plant some more different varieties so I can get some succession planting going on there um, and get some things in the garden because it is definitely in between stage at the moment. I've got rainbow chard, I've got some cabbages and cauliflowers and broccoli still going, but um, a lot of things I've eaten or removed and it is definitely looking bare, but it won't take long. It'll be all back cranking. And obviously it looks bare, but I can still pull together some, I can still pull together meals all the time. Um, oh, and I forgot to even use this big old spring onion here. So like pop them in something later i've finally got some beautiful red nasturtiums because the orange and yellow um obviously these ones are the most dominant because they are taking over everything and then you sometimes get some little red ones um so got those as well do a seed planting video okay we can do that I was going to do a video on my seed planting and I have, I did film some of it, but um, I don't know, filming videos, it takes so much time to get them done. And then, so I, I really am getting into the swing of these lives because I just do it and it's done and we can chat about it and ask questions. Whereas we're, I'm doing the videos, um, takes hours to film them and then hours to edit them and then upload them. Um, and it is just so much work so I do like doing these lives and we'll try and mix them up with some food and some seeds and some gardening if I can get my camera set up to do lives in the garden that would be amazing but at the moment um I haven't figured that out so I'm just using my computer and I can't really just take my computer around the garden <laughs> so that's why you hang out with me in the kitchen and the laundry yeah okay can't grow nasturtium. That is weird. But I have heard that from a few people. <laughs> it must be it must be just like a temperature thing or something, because yeah, well, there's definitely a weed here. And I and in quite a few places. 
Do seasoning. I don't have a kitchen table, Steve. I have a kitchen bench. <laughs> I don't have a table. It's one thing I do not have is a table. But we could do it at the kitchen bench. So let's get dirt and seeds all over the kitchen. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> okay. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to go now for the third, fourth, five, fifth, final time. <laughs> Um, thank you guys so much and I will see you guys next week next Sunday let's do it same time same place back here sounds like a plan all right <laughs> see ya